Welcome back friends to another video. Every once in a while, a new story comes out that shows bravery and courage in the business world. And that's something that doesn't happen all the time. And so when it does, I like to talk about it. I'm talking about the new story about the Chinese tennis player that has gone missing and what that means for the Chinese Olympic Games. Let me start out by saying, in this video, I will be making comments that are critical about China. Please do not misunderstand me. I have nothing but love and respect for the Chinese people and the Chinese culture, and please do not send any hate to these communities. My comments are directed at the government of China, the Chinese Communist Party. Peng Shuai is one of the top tennis players in the world. She recently released allegations on social media that she was raped by one of the most powerful Chinese government officials. Shortly after her post, all of her social media was removed and she has gone missing in China. Now, a written statement has been released by the government-controlled news media. In the statement, Peng Shuai takes back her earlier claims, but there has been no confirmation from her that the statement is true. Yesterday, the government-controlled news media released video footage showing Peng Shuai at a local event and eating at a restaurant. But in the video, Peng Shuai does not speak. Her coach is in the video telling everybody what date it is, so you know that it's a recent date, and you can hear the video director's voice in the background directing what is going on. The whole video is bizarre, and Peng Shuai has still not been allowed to communicate with anyone. It is unclear if she is being controlled or if she is safe. What I want to highlight in this video is the actions of the WTA, or the Women's Tennis Association. The WTA released a public statement condemning China's censorship of Peng Shuai's statements and the appearance that she is being unfairly detained for speaking out. This was a brave action by the WTA. And let me explain how business in China works. The Chinese Communist Party controls everything. So if you want to do business in China, you cannot say anything negative about the government or you are going to be banned from the country. The Chinese market is huge. So the smart thing to do if you want to make money is to go along with the government's actions. So the WTA's actions were brave because China might just ban tennis in the entire country if they feel like it threatens their power. The WTA made a choice. They decided that the safety and security of their players is more important than making money. They gave up all of that potential revenue to stand up for what is right. You should not be able to rape women and then arrest them when they speak out against you. That is not okay. And it is not okay to look the other way so that you can make money from it. This is something that I talk about on this channel. When you make business decisions, you should not only look at how much money you are going to make, but also base your decision on what is right. But Steve, at the beginning when I said it takes courage for you to speak out, I meant it. I mean, there's a lot of uh, people who do business uh, with China who look the, way, look the other way on a lot of things, okay? There's a lot, of, a lot of people. You have threatened to take your business elsewhere if China does not give you answers. Uh, that would mean pulling 10 events out of China that you have scheduled for next year, including what you call your crown jewel, the WTA finals, which China is slated to host through 2028 as part of a 10-year deal. You know, when you announced that deal, you called it a $1 billion commitment to the WTA. So this is real in every way for you. How serious are you about this threat? Well, we're, uh, if anyone wants to question our fortitude um, behind a statement like that, they can certainly try to. Um, we're at a crossroads with our relationship, uh, obviously, with, our, with China and operating our business over there. There's no question about it. 
it's something that's actually very sad because we have some amazing relationships over there and have developed some some unbelievable programs that are really introducing the sport to a lot of young Chinese uh, players um, that want to become the next Li Na, the next Peng Shui, um, and all of those types of things. So it's very exciting. And we've had a lot of success over there. You know, I think that when you look at this, though, um, you, there's too many times in our world today when we get into issues like this that we let business, politics, money dictate uh, what's right and what's wrong. And when you, as you, you reflected earlier, when we have a young person who has the fortitude to step up and make these allegations, knowing full well what the results of that are going to be, for us to not support that and demand uh, justice as we go through it, um, you know, we have to start as a world making decisions that are based upon um, right and wrong, period. And uh, we can't compromise that. And we're definitely willing to pull our business and deal with all the complications that come with it um, because this is certainly, um, this is bigger than the business. I also want to point out another brave action by the Wall Street Journal. One of the best write-ups of this situation was released this week by the Wall Street Journal editorial board on Thursday. They not only discuss this case, but they compare the actions of the WTA against the NBA, the National Basketball Association. In a shocking contrast, the NBA has shown time after time of supporting China and silencing coaches and players who speak out against China's horrible track record on human rights. The NBA makes a lot of money from lucrative clothing deals. These same clothes are made with cotton by slave labor in concentration camps in China. These camps are used to carry out genocide against the Uyghur Muslims in China. The Chinese government disputes this, but the evidence is not debatable. We know this is going on. The U.S. government has declared China's actions genocide against the Uyghur Muslims. So the NBA and the WTA show two shockingly different approaches to making business decisions. The WTA showed bravery and courage in standing up for what is right, and the NBA has not. The NBA does not want to risk access to the lucrative Chinese market, and the NBA does not want to lose all the money they are making from slave labor. Now, you'll have to excuse me if I seem a little worked up from all of this, but have we learned nothing in this country? Why are Americans making money by forcing slaves to work in the cotton fields? What are we doing? I do not care how much money we are making. We should not be purchasing any clothing in America that is made using slave labor. Sometimes business decisions have to be made by doing what is right. Bringing this back to the Wall Street Journal. The people who read the Wall Street Journal are typically wealthy and successful people, probably people who have investments in China. So for the Wall Street Journal editorial board to print that article took courage because they probably made some of their readers uncomfortable. I know that the media gets a lot of hate these days for fake news, but this is an example of real journalism. They reported the uncomfortable truth about what is going on in China, as well as the hypocrisy of American business. That took courage and bravery, and it is good to see that journalism is alive and well at the Wall Street Journal. The 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games are less than 100 days away, starting on February 4th. A lot of businesses are going to have to make difficult decisions. There is a lot of money that comes from the Olympics involving sponsorships. I really hope that businesses think about their decisions. Are you making your decisions based on money alone? Or are you thinking about what is right?
More than 200 human rights groups have written an open letter to NBC, BBC, and others to cancel their deals to broadcast the Olympic Games. In this letter, the human rights groups called the Olympics the Genocide Games and compared them to the games hosted in Germany in 1936 by Adolf Hitler's Third Reich. Here is a list of the corporate sponsors of the Olympic Games. These companies are going to have to decide, are they going to say something about China's actions or are they going to stay silent? I'm going to read them out because it is important that everyone knows who is supporting these Olympic Games. Airbnb, Alibaba Group, Allianz, Atos, Bridgestone, Coca-Cola, Dow Chemical, General Electric, Intel, Omega, Panasonic, Procter & Gamble, Samsung, Toyota, and Visa. What are these companies going to do? Are they going to act like the NBA or the WTA? I'm going to say this again just in case you did not hear me the first time. You companies are sponsoring a sporting event that 200 human rights groups are calling the Genocide Games. At some point you have to ask yourself whether this is a good business decision or not. It's hard not to see the parallels between what happened in Nazi Germany and what is happening in China today. World War II did not happen that long ago, and there are people alive today who remember what happened. Six million Jewish people were killed in concentration camps. How could something so horrible happen? It was because if people spoke up against the government, the police would show up at your house and kill you. And so everyone stayed silent. The same thing is happening today. One of the top tennis players in the world has spoken up about a horrible rape by one of China's top leaders, and she has gone missing. How can these companies stay silent and support the Olympics in 100 days in order to make a buck? Now I want to hear from you. What do you think about China hosting the Olympic Games? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm Zach. Thank you so much for watching.